Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Who fancies a look at the IS-7? Shall we do it? Yeah, why not? Here it is. Tier 10 Russian heavy tank, the IS-7. When I started playing World of Tanks, this was the tank everybody was afraid of. Um, it's probably fair to say that it was totally overpowered. Um, you can always tell which tank is flavour of the month by the one everybody's driving in clan wars. Before the T110E5 was introduced, everybody drove IS-7s. It was that good. Well, the IS-7 has received some nerfs and some buffs, but it's been nerfed indirectly rather than directly because of the introduction of new tanks that are in their own way just as good as this thing. The T110E5. The IS-4 used to be the little brother of the IS-7. This used to be the Tier 9 Russian heavy tank. This is now Tier 10 and it's just as good as the IS-7. Um, you've got the E100 was introduced. That sort of took the edge off the IS-7 a little, although I'd still put my money on the IS-7 over the E100 in a straight fight. Um, tanks like the T110E5 Tank destroyers, the, the new tier 10 tank destroyers, give this tank serious problems. The tier 10 mediums give this tank serious problems. So while the IS-7 hasn't really changed that much since it was considered to be totally overpowered, um, the competition that it faces is a lot tougher. Uh, and so it's no longer quite such a clear-cut choice as it was a year and a half to two years ago of which tier 10 heavy you wanted to be driving. So what do we actually get for our money? Uh, and this thing will cost you 6,100,000 credits. So, is it worth it? Well, you get 2,150 hit points. That's actually not a lot. The IS-4 has 2,500. The E-100 has 2,700. The mouse, of course, has 3,000. But just think about that for a minute. I mean, the mouse is obviously the, the exception to the rule. It's just got monstrous amounts of health. But 3,000 is, is, is a lot. But it's a third again as many as the IS-7. That's hell's bells. The only tier 10 heavy tank that has less health than the IS-7 is the AMX-50B. And it only has... 50 health less. 2,100. <laughs> Let me just check the T57. Before I, I keep forgetting this thing exists. Yeah, that's even got more. Not much more, but more. 2,250. Um, hmm, so that's not particularly encouraging. It's a big machine as well. Well, that's kind of bizarre. I mean, it isn't really that big a machine. You know, compare that to the KV-5. I mean, it's a fair old size. It's not small, but it's not huge. Um, and it weighs nearly 70 tonnes. It does have a 1,050 horsepower engine, though. Uh, but it needs all the grunt it can get from that engine. Because it's a heavy, heavy, heavy tank. Um, the top speed of 59.6 kph was buffed in the last patch, patch 8.5. It used to do 50. But that's a theoretical top speed. Um... The engine is powerful, but it's not quite powerful enough. It will reach that speed, but not under its own power. Um, you need a bit of external assistance, like a hill. <laughs> um, but it will reach and exceed that speed going downhill. And for a machine that has as much frontal armor as this thing, and weighs that much, and can get up to that speed, it does ram quite well. Um... Mobility, however, is not all it could be. Despite the straight line speed, it only has a 28 degree traverse. And the turret traverse as well, only 25 degrees. Now that's not bad, but it's definitely not good either. And that's kind of disappointing because this is supposed to be the fast, mobile, uh, less heavily armoured Russian heavy tank line. But it's not, you know, it's not it's not like driving an E100 or a mouse around. It's still reasonably mobile. It's just a little lacking. But then we get to the armour. Now, the armour of the IS-7 is... It's good and it's bad. But it's mostly good. 
Um, the turret is absolutely magnificent. It's a hundred and no, sorry, it's two hundred and forty millimeters thick at the front. It's a hundred and eighty-five millimeters thick at the sides, and yeah, all right, the rear's garbage, ninety-four millimeters. But you know, it's the rear of the tank. We don't expect heavily armored rears. Um, and just look. I mean, you try and find a flat surface on that to reliably hit with a shell, other than at the back. Penetrating the turret of an IS-7 is a bloody nightmare. In almost every circumstance possible, if you've got a choice of shooting the IS-7 in the turret or anywhere else, shoot him anywhere else, <laughs> because the turret is... It's just not worth the risk. Unless you are jammed, unless this guy is AFK, and you are jammed right up against his side with a Jagdpanzer E100, with the barrel of your gun jammed right into the side of the turret, you know, and he's facing that way, just shoot him in the hole. <laughs> you will bounce so many shots off the turret of this tank. It is a superbly well-armoured, angled and sloped turret. It's very, very, very good. Um, if you're at the front of the IS-7 and you have absolutely no choice but to shoot him in the turret, shoot him here. And good luck, because it's not a massive target. Your other option, the turret ring can be quite vulnerable. But look at how close the seam is between the turret and the hull. Good, again, good luck with that. The hull is interesting. Um, we'll start at the rear, just to get it out of the way. The rear's garbage. Yep, it's 100 millimeters thick. Just, you know, shoot them wherever you like. Um, the side is tricky. It's 150 millimeters thick, which on paper isn't amazing. I mean, you know, most most tier 10 tanks have guns with 250 millimeters of better penetration. But this is a very, very tricky target to attack from the side. And it's because of spaced and sloped armor. Now, the tracks pretty much count as spaced armor as well. In fact, in patch 8.6, they are, for the, certainly for high explosive anti-tank ammo, they're going to count as spaced armor. This bit here is all spaced armor. The only spot on the side where you've got that raw 150 millimeter thick armor that is at a flat angle is this bit here below the spaced armor and above the tracks. If you can hit an IS-7 from the side, shoot them there. You will have no problem if you manage to hit them there. You will penetrate, you will do damage. Where you start getting problems is when you start hitting this spaced armor. Well, obviously, the tracks as well are notorious for absorbing shots. But this spaced armor here is very, very, very tricky. For two reasons. One, it's spaced armor. And two, you don't really get much of an idea until you look at it of, of how much this spaced armor actually sticks out from the actual hull of the tank. If you look at the back here, right, you can see... It's actually quite a narrow tank, right? This bit, that's how wide the tank actually is. And what you have above the tracks and under the spaced armor is the side of the tank goes up here to about there. And you can almost see, follow this angle here. It actually bulges out at a 45 degree angle underneath that spaced armor. So when you fire at the side of the IS-7, the reason people have so many bouncers when they fire at the side of the IS-7 or zero damage penetrating hits is because what's actually happening is the shot's going in, it's penetrating the spaced armor, and then it's bouncing off this sloped 150 millimeter thick. I mean, look at the angle on that. That's pretty much what it looks like underneath all that spaced armor. And that's the problem people have shooting at the side of the IS-7. So always aim, even if you don't hit here, at least try to aim for under the spaced armor and above the tracks if you've got side shots at the IS-7. As for the front, it's got that famous pike nose that you first saw on the IS-3. You see it on the IS-8. It's here again on the IS-7. The pike nose is pre-angled armor. When you're looking at a German heavy tank, like the E-100 or the E-75 or the Tiger, facing an enemy like that is asking for trouble. To make the most of the armor of these tanks, you have to angle them. You don't do that with the IS-3, 8, or 7. Because this pike configuration at the front of the hull 
is pre-angled. You keep the front pointed straight towards the enemy. Now, it, it's not without weaknesses. The most obvious one being the lower glacis. Um, but that becomes less and less of a weakness the closer you get to the enemy. Because if you think about it, um, if my gun is up here and I am shooting at that lower glacis, you know, if I'm all the way over here, and I'm exaggerating distances here for the purposes of effect, but if I'm all the way over here and I'm shooting down into that, that's not that bad an angle. I can probably penetrate it without it bouncing. But the closer you get, the steeper the angle becomes that you have to sh until, you know, when you get within 50 meters of this thing, particularly if you have a high mounted gun, penetrating that lower glacis becomes harder and harder the closer you get. And that dictates the way you need to drive this tank. Right? You need to get close to the enemy to eliminate your weaknesses and start exploiting your strengths. Now, if you start angling this pike-nosed armor, you're going to give yourself all kinds of problems. If you turn it like that, what you're actually doing is you're increasing the slope of this side. If I'm shooting at you from, from, from here, shooting straight into the tank, that becomes an auto-bounce zone, but you actually reduce the effective thickness of all of this armor here, and you can barely miss it. An aiming guide, headlights. You're not actually trying to shoot the headlights, but you're aiming for this armor. From this angle, that's where you want to shoot the IS-7. From that side, same deal. These The Russians handily placed these little uh, headlights here as an aiming indicator for where to shoot an IS-7 if he starts angling. If he's not angling and you don't have the lower glacis, the next best place to shoot is this bit here. But it's tough to penetrate. Not as tough as the rest, but still not easy. Or failing that, Again, try to go for the turret ring. So that's the tank. Now, equipment fit. I have gone for gun rammer, vents, and it will take a vertical stabilizer. You may wish to think about a wet ammo rack. I have had problems with my ammo rack on this tank, uh, more often than I can put down to just random luck. However, um, I just love having improved vents, and a vertical stabilizer is great, and you, you cannot drive this tank <laughs> without a gun rammer. It is such a slow reload. And that's just occurred to me, I've completely forgotten to talk about the gun. We can cover the gun very, very quickly, actually, because it's a very, very simple weapon. It's a 130mm S70 gun. The rate of fire is very, very bad. 4.38 rounds per minute. The penetration is very good. 260 millimeters, only 303 millimeters with APCR. That's kind of disappointing. If you look at the high explosive anti tank ammo, for example, of the T110E5, that thing with its premium ammo gets 381 millimeters of penetration. Anyway, well, oop, wrong tank. There we go, IS7. Alpha damage is really good, 490. That's, I think only the uh, E100 beats that, but the E100 can't hit anything and can't penetrate them even when it does hit it, unless it's firing gold. 490 is, uh, is really good. Unfortunately, all that power comes at a price. 0.4 accuracy, and the worst aiming time, that is just bad. 3.4 second aiming time. That is, oh, that is bad news. But those stats dictate how you want to be using this gun. In fact, the whole tank really dictates... It's just blindingly obvious. When you look at the speed of the tank, the fact that you, you need to get this thing close to eliminate shots at your biggest weak spot, the fact that the gun can't aim for shit, can't... You know, it, get this tank right into the face of the enemy and blast them in the face with this big old gun. That's how the IS-7 works. I mean, yeah, sure, you can hit people at long range with this tank. Even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day, but that's not necessarily the best way you should be using this thing's strength. You try using this thing as a sniper, you're not doing yourself any favours. That's not what it's for. And yet, it's a high-risk lifestyle. Because in order to get close to enemy tanks, to put this thing where it needs to be on the battlefield, right in the face of the enemy... You first have to, you know, they're going to be shooting at you 
as you're getting in close, and you only have 2,000 hit points. So driving the IS-7 is, is all about using the terrain to your advantage to get in to the face of the enemy and then start battering them to death with this monster gun. It's a lot like driving a KV-1S, except at tier 10, which is appropriate because going through the KV-1S is how you get to the IS-7. Now, crew skills. Um, if you've bought an IS-7 with a new crew, you want repairs as your first skill. All right, don't argue, just do it. Um, artillery loves shooting IS-7s because artillery is very, very good at killing IS-7s. And even artillery that misses you is going to blow your tracks off. And then the next thing that shoots at you is going to kill you. Get repairs for your first skill. Second skills, well, I've gone with Sixth Sense. But in fact, the second repairs reached 100%. I immediately swapped it for Sixth Sense. It's just such a useful skill. Um, and then I went straight back to repairs again for the commander. Uh, none of this view range bollocks. I drive this tank right up to the enemy, and then I hit them with my sword. <laughs> um... I am close enough to know where they are. I don't really need view range on the IS-7. It's 400 meter base view range anyway. It's not bad, it's good enough. This tank, if you don't know where the enemy are, you're not driving this tank properly. Um, the gunner, again, 100% repairs, and then I've gone for snapshot. Um, I've gone with skills that enhance this thing's ability to pop around a corner, derp somebody in the face, and then pull back again. So snapshot for the, for the gunner, um, clutch braking to aid in turning for the driver. Now, it has two loaders. Because of this weakish ammo rack that the tank has, the second one of my loaders reaches 100% on their first skill, I always train them in uh, safe stowage. Uh, and then I went straight back to repairs again for the first loader. The second loader is also a radio operator. Now, which is kind of useful, because loader skills are generally pretty shit. <laughs> um, once you've got safe storage on one loader, there isn't really a lot else that's worth taking. But because this radio operator also uh, because, correction, sorry, because this loader is also the tank's radio operator, uh, because I already had repairs at 100%, I went with situational awareness. It just for, you know, I couldn't think of anything better to give him. Camouflage? <laughs> Please. Um, so that's why I picked the skills that I did. So how does this thing actually play? Well, yeah, it's not bad at all. Let's have a look at a few games. So here we go. This is uh, this is actually an older replay. I'm platooned up with uh, Quickie Baby, who is back there in his M48, and Ector in his FV4202. So they're both in tier 10 mediums. I'm in the IS-7. This is going to be a tough game. Uh, there's basically me and a pair of E75s. The enemy team have got an E100, a mouse two E-75s and an STI for their heavily armoured tanks. So this is a good map for the IS-7. It's a city map, Ruinburg. But I've got some very tough competition on the enemy team. I'm expecting the E-100 to be firing gold ammo because the E-100's gun is useless without it. I'm expecting the mouse to be firing gold ammo, because the mouse's gun isn't very good without gold ammo either. So I'm going to have problems. E75s are tough tanks to penetrate. The STI is incredibly well armoured as well. However, as the biggest tier 10, well in fact I'm the only tier 10 heavy tank on the team, I, I really do have the responsibility of heading into the town to anchor the defence. Now luckily I've got a Yag Tiger and a T-30 as backup, and the two E-75s are coming in here with me. Ector and Quickie Baby have gone up to do the medium tank thing over on the eastern side of the map. And here we go. You can see this thing is not slow. I'm struggling to reach 50 kph. In fact, I'm struggling to go over 40 kph, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not a slow machine. It looks like the two E-75s are sticking together. The one behind me has taken advantage of that pothole to get himself holed down. Oh, there's the mouse. 
And I think I just hit his tracks. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. I take his tracks, he takes mine. But I'm spotted, I'm immobilised, and there's two very, very big artillery in this game. And I, I want to get off this street corner. Oh crap, there's the E100. But he's backing off. It looks like either Hector or Quickie Baby just hit him. Okay, I need to get around this corner because of that. Somebody needs to stop these guys from pushing around, and I'm the, I'm the best person placed to do it. Also, sitting here keeps me safe from artillery fire. <sighs> Tried to straighten the pike nose, but I just wasn't quite fast enough. Pat managed to get one into me, but I certainly did more damage to him than he did to me. But he doesn't have much health, much you know, much health less than I do. Now this is where you're vulnerable in an IS-7 when you're coming around a corner, because you can't straighten your armor out. Okay, that's interesting. Where did they go? Tiger 2 over there. Hmm. It looks like that E75 wants to push, and he's waiting for me to go first. Well, that's fair enough. Oh, the agony of indecision. My flank is safe. It's just this pattern. And he he's going to blow... He's, if I try to go around this corner, the chances are he's going to blow my drive wheel off. And he's sitting there waiting for me to come around. And there... Oh my Christ. And there we go. There's a Yag Tiger back there. And he took my ammo rack out. And that's, that's with safe stowage on my driver. Patton's coming around. E75 blows his tracks off. Thank you. Good stuff. And again, you don't want to be trading out for damage in a pattern with an LA7. You will lose. SU152. Um, somebody fired and bounced. Let's go around. Good stuff. The SU152 can still give me problems if he's firing HE. He's unlikely to kill me, but he could knock out crew members. I've already used my repair kit on my ammo rack. STI, put one in his lower glacis. This is looking much, much better. Um, we're pulling the scores back. Tiger 2's coming around. I'm not loaded, and there is cover in the way. I'm not going to get a shot at him. This E75 looks like he needs help. He looks like he's been tracked. We'll go around. Another shot into the lower glacis. Oof. But you can see how the damage starts piling up. I've only taken four hits. I'm down to 19% health. And more importantly, I'm just going to pause things here. Oops, wrong button. Look at the map. The only thing protecting my flank is that, what is it? That Yag Tiger. Quickie Baby and Hector have dealt with the enemy who came around this side of the map, and, and they're the ones who are going to save my ass here. I mean, <laughs> we need support. We're, we're, the entire enemy team is all clustered around this corner, facing off against me. They've killed this E-75, that Yag Tiger, and the guys behind me. I just need to... It's like Pegasus Bridge. Hold until relieved. Tiger 2's taken a ferocious kicking. I'm not interested in going around that corner now, he says, and then moves up to the corner. I really shouldn't be doing this. Not on 403 health. I'm having a look, see which way the guns are pointing. Oh, and it bounced off an SU-152. Are you joking? Quickie Baby and Extra are coming to help, but they're, they're only in mediums. They're, they're taking fire. We need to keep the pressure up, though. We shouldn't lose this. STI's dead. We've spotted their artillery. This is all good stuff. Ah, oh, and they're just crumbling. So, this... We still need to kill that mouse, of course. You can see the, the strengths and weaknesses of an IS-7 in close-in city fighting. Oh, 
can't believe it. <laughs> Bounced off the side of the turret of the mouse. Although, you know, it was angled. And it is a mouse, after all. But I'm going to get another shot before he dies. There we go. Ninja the killing blow. <laughs> so, hmm. How did we do in that one? Well, not bad. Not great, but not bad. 42,000 credits earned is... Uh, it's not bad for a tier 10 heavy. It's certainly not good though. Um, if you look at the detailed report, 10 shots fired, all of them hit. Only seven of them penetrated. Now, for a gun that does around 500 average damage on a hit, in theory, those seven penetrating hits should have given us an extra thousand damage. So you're looking at two zero damage penetrating hits there. On the other hand, we took nine hits, and only four of them did damage. So I took five zero damaging penetrating hits. So it's you know it's you can't really sit here complaining that two of your shots didn't do any damage when you took five hits that didn't do any damage. So yeah, a good workout for the armor of the machine, if not for the gun. I wanted to show you this replay to illustrate the almost random nature of this 130mm S70 gun. I platooned up here with circumflexes. He's there in his T57 Heavy. It's Muravanka Standard Battle. So, yeah, as far as the matchup goes, it's, yeah, it's reasonably, reasonably, um, reasonably even spread between the two teams. They've definitely got the heavy tank advantage. Two T125s, an IS-4 and an IS-7, and a Jagdpanzer E100. Rather than a Jagdpanzer E100, we've got a T110E3. Don't see many of those. They're quite rare. Um, E100 IS7, T57 Heavy. We've got a batch at 25T though. So we've got one tier 10 medium. But it's a pretty even spread. And the batch at does not appear to be a retard because it's a minute into the game and he's not dead yet. The two T71 drivers, on the other hand, both are. So we've got a WZ131 we've been doing scout and runs around the top here, and I think he spotted my S8 coming in. E75's backing me up, I've got circumflexes behind me with his autoloader. Quite a strong force coming around the side here. So, parked in the bush, waiting to see what I can see. Waiting for backup to get closer. And what do we got? Oh, there we go. Oh, an, uh, an SU-12254. Dangerous machine. Let's all kill him first. And the team does exactly that. So that was a very, very short game for that tier 9 Russian tank destroyer. Now. IS-8. Nah, no. Even if that shot hadn't gone low, it probably would have bounced. Shooting at an IS-8. It's not the most heavily armoured tank in the game. But at that sort of angle, because he didn't give his his lower glacis up, that, that was never going to penetrate. Okay, it looks like everybody's waiting for me to push forward. I'd feel a bit more comfortable if the E100 was doing it, but... Oh, hell, he's taken a hit already. Oh, we got a decent shot on that IS-7. Don't know who to aim for here. IS-4? No, IS-7. Aim for his lower glacis, went wide, blew his tracks off. Oh, crap, a Yagtai. IS-7 puts one into me. The Yagtai is tracked. Before he can reload. Now there. That's good stuff. That was a very good damage roll. That's that's what you want to be doing with the IS-7. He returns fire at me, artillery fires and misses. Check this out. There's another good hit. Look at this bat chap, making these guys look stupid. Circumflexes has gone around with the batch out. The autoloaders are swept in at these guys from behind, and I fire and hit the E75. It was a dangerous shot to take, but it didn't help that the shot went wide anyway. Although, luckily, all that happened was the E75 lost its tracks. I didn't do any actual damage to it.
but of the five or six sh shots that I've fired, how many have actually gone where I've aimed them, even at close range? And that's just what this gun is like. You're going to see a shot coming up here. You're not going to... Well, you will believe it because it's me. <laughs> but, uh, right, did you see that? Tracer. Artillery idiots still sitting in those woods. Don't know why they're not running for it. They're just sitting there waiting to die. Well, they're not even paying attention to what's going on on the map. WZ-131 rushes around. There's the GW Tiger. Where did he go? Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. There's the M40. How does that shot miss? How? I just... Well, luckily the GW Tiger took a punt at me and that missed as well, so... But that's this gun. I mean, I've done 1600 damage. Which... And I've scored some high damage rolls. But... I'm only hitting and penetrating with a third of the shots that I'm firing. Now this... Yeah, look at that. <laughs> E75 was well angled, I've got to give him that, but at least I hit him. Which is a first. And the 3.4 second aim and time of this gun is not good. Watch this E50. And you aim and... well, that's it. I didn't wait to aim, that was the problem with that one. I only went through about one and a half to two seconds of the 3.4 second aiming cycle. And so I'm rewarded with epoxy 41 damage killing blow on that E50. 1700 damage done. And I must have fired 10 shots. But it's going to get worse. There we go. Object 704. And you aim, and aim, and aim, and aim, and hit, and it bounces. The shot didn't go anywhere near where I aimed. It sailed up and to the right and hit his gun mantlet. And this one didn't even hit him. 360 metres. So, we'll drive closer because I want to hit him with my sword. Look at that bat chat go. This guy was just trolling everybody. He was a good driver. Oh, T110E5. While that bat chat's got the object busy. Let's take a shot. There we go. And aim, and aim. Good stuff. Good high damage roll, 558. So we're up to 2,000, nearly 3,000, uh, 2,300 damage done now. And I'm, I'm doing what I should be doing. I'm getting closer to the Object 704. And I aim, and it bounces again. And then he doesn't bounce. I've only taken three hits, and I'm down to 26% health. It's that lack of health on the IS-7 that gets you into trouble. More than anything else. Well, that and the random nature of the bloody gun. Oh... Object... Okay, right. I don't want to go over the rise and get dirt by both of these guys at the same time. And there you go. Penetrated the Object 704. I've, I've hit that guy two or three times. Well, there you go. My armour finally does what it's for. And that's the only penetrating hit that I actually get to inflict on this Object 704 because he reloads before I do, and this time he doesn't miss. So, the gun, I don't know, it's difficult to complain too much about the gun. I mean, in, in seven hits I've done just short of 3,000 damage. And I have had some good damage rolls. I was doing over 500, over 600. But it's... I prefer something... I prefer a tank with a gun that doesn't have as much of, as much of the RNG about it. It just seems that with this gun, even when you're putting yourself in the best possible situation, getting right up close, using your armour, um, negating the horrible aim in time and accuracy of the gun by driving right into the face of the enemy and blasting them, the gun just lets you down. Uh, right when you really, really don't need it to. As evidenced by my uh, total failure against that Object 704. But still, you know, not a bad game. Did 
3,000 damage, and, and we won. Uh, and I came out of that with a healthy dose of XP and credits. So it just, it could have been so much better. Uh, and, and it should have been so much better, because I didn't really do anything wrong in that game, other than trusting the gun not to blow the tracks off a friendly E75 in front of me. So um, let's have a look at what this thing is like, um, platooned up with other IS-7s. Well, here I'm platooned up with uh, Quickie Baby and Ike. Quickie Baby in the IS-7, Ike in the T110E5. Tier 10 game on Fishing Bay. For some strange reason, seem to do very, very well in the IS-7 on this map. Which is kind of weird, because it's not what you'd really consider to be a, an, an optimal IS-7 map. And we're doing the counterintuitive thing here. And yet it always seems to work really well. I suppose it depends on what the rest of the team does. And instead of taking the IS-7s into the town, we tend to... Giving away all my secrets here. <laughs> we tend to flank with them, because they are quite fast machines. Quickie Baby in particular, he skips a fire extinguisher on his and goes with removed speed governor. And you can see it making the difference here. So we've got a Leopard 1 coming around with us. So that's some useful extra firepower. He's very wisely letting us go ahead. I'm trying, trying to catch up with uh, Ike and QB here. And bingo. An E50. He's put one in the quickie baby. Um, fully aimed, missed. Just hold on to that thought. I mean, you shouldn't be surprised, it's a Russian heavy tank gun after all. Fully aimed, missed. Now watch this. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> there is no justice in the world, is there? <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway. Oh, that Leopard 1 just found the enemy object 268. And there's a T62A behind us as well. Oh, this is... Uh, mm. Okay, that Leopard 1's not feeling very clever now. He's just lost half his health in one shot to a Tier 10 tank destroyer. But we're beating back this T uh, T62A. And unfortunately, he's spotting us for artillery. We've got this rock and bushes behind us to screen us from the object. Who's, uh... Oh, well, really? Leopard 1, guys. Leopard 1. Yeah, you like that, don't you, bitch? He fires and misses, and he loses 500 health for his pains. So he's not having a very good day. I don't really want to go around the corner after him. Not with an Object 268 up there. Um, but they're ranging us in for artillery. I'm trying to... I'm trying to juke this... Oh, crap. I was trying to juke that 268 into shooting so I could pop out and take a pop at him, but we need to focus this T-62A down, who came back for us, so... We did that. Now check this out. There's three of them. Oh, come on. Reload. 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 Oh, thank you. Low damage roll after low damage roll, though. I don't know if you've noticed this. I've never done more than 400 damage in a shot yet. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to take a hit from the 268, but I figure it's worth it to finish off this uh, WZ-120. That was a big hit, though. 762 damage. Okay. We need to finish off this weapon. So there's one from me. The, I, the E75 is running away. We, we, we're, we're fine. We can take our time dealing with this fella. Ike puts one into him. And if Quickie Baby doesn't finish him off, I will. Right, so, yeah, doing alright. I still have almost 1400 health. Spot a Type 62 over there, and Quickie Baby's going to have a cheeky shot at him, trying to finish him off. And he does. E75's running away. Again, trying to tease this 268 into firing, so that we can rush. And I'm sitting here on almost 1,400 health. Quickie Baby gets one into him. I'm trying to follow up, but not with this gun. 
Quick, your baby's going for it. Ah, oh, balls. All right. I'm going to have to go around now. And I figure, you know, it's all right. I can still take a hit. I have 1,388. And that's the ammo rack. That's the ammo rack of the IS-7. It is a significant problem. And that's even with 100% safe stowage on the loader. The ammo rack of this tank is very, very vulnerable. Coming around corners like that. Well, if that E75 had been loaded, he could have ended Quickie Baby's life in one shot. This is kind of a mixed bag. I mean, this is where you want to be with an IS-7, right in the face of the enemy, giving him shots at nothing but your turret. Unfortunately, that means he can't hit the lower glacis of the IS-7 in front uh, the E-75. Not a problem for Ike, though. <laughs> with the gun on his T110E5. And now the only thing left is enemy artillery. And I'm pretty sure... Is he trying to suicide? He probably is, you know, he's a scumbag after all. And the leopard finishes him off. So, decent result. Disappointing about the ammo rack, though. Okay, this one is myself. Quickie Baby in his IS-7 Ike in his T-125. This time we're on Muravanka. It's an encounter battle. And this one is an example of... Well, it's how not to play the IS-7. Um, you're going to see Quickie Baby here driving the tank the way it should be driven. You're going to see me not driving the tank the way it should be driven, and yet still personally doing pretty well, but at the cost of the life of one of my platoon members. And it's results like this that can reinforce... You know, when you're doing it all wrong, but still getting a decent result out of it, trains you to drive the tank the wrong way. Uh, and hopefully... You know, from you, you guys can benefit from my experience and not do what I do in this game. You'll see what I mean. It'll, it'll make more sense as the as the game develops. We've got some fantastic scouting going on there, but we haven't actually spotted anybody here in the woods ourselves. We've just decided that we're going to pile into the woods, kill everything in here, route their artillery, and then sweep around from the north. That's the plan. So, made it into the woods undetected. Time to move up and start flushing them out. Quick baby walks across an IS-3, I stumble into an IS-7, and then here's this bloody gun again. Aimed at his lower glacis, fully aimed, pull the trigger, goes low, misses. <laughs> There's a Centurion 7-1 as well. He takes a punt at me, and bounces, because I'm angled properly. I return fire, and there you go, scumbag hits me. Well, scumbag doesn't even hit me, misses me, blows my tracks off, kills my driver. We will have our revenge. Ike's moving up on that IS-7. There he is. Artie's making a run for it. I think, no, we need to kill this IS-7 first. That time we get him. Centurion bounces off me again. He's not having a very good day at all. I go around one side. Ike and Quickie Baby go around the other. And, ooh, GW Panther, much bigger target. And by some miracle, I'm actually allowed to kill him. Centurion's having a real bad day. And it was great up to this point. But from here on in, I start doing it wrong. What we should be doing is myself and Quickie Baby charging across this open ground and getting into close combat with those remaining enemy tanks. And Quickie Baby does exactly that but I keep getting distracted by all these bright, shiny objects in front of me. 57 damage on a Tiger two, uh, And I'm sitting here waiting all the way through the reload and the aiming cycle. 
just to blow the tracks off an IS-7. Quickie Baby is only... He only has 835 health left. He's going for it. I should be going up there with him. We've got Ike giving a long-range rapid supporting fire behind us. And instead, I'm still sitting here. Yes, I can be supporting Quickie Baby from back here. But I'm not in the best tank in which to do it. This gun. If this gun can let you down, it will let you down. So I start moving up. And then the second I'm loaded, I do it again. But look how long it takes to aim. In all of the time that I sit here waiting to aim with this gun, I could have been 150 metres further up and out of this open field and supporting my platoon mates. And then I do it again. And you wait to aim, you wait to aim, you wait, and by the time it's aimed, he's gone. And again, I'm still stuck in the middle of this field when I could have been up there. And our quickie baby stuck between a Pershing and a T-34. And I do it again. I could have been up there and killed this T-34 in the time it's taken me. Sitting here in this field, not pulling the trigger. Aiming at targets 500 metres away. This is the wrong way to be playing an IS-7. And it just cost Quickie Baby his tank. Killed by an AMX-50B. And even though we're winning, and I've got three kills, I've done less than 2,000 damage. In a machine with a gun that does 490 average damage, you should be doing better than this. And the thing about IS-7 platoons is they are very, very powerful. But you've got to stick together, and you've got to get close to the enemy. So don't do what I did. Right, let's see what you can do with an IS-7 in the hands of somebody who doesn't suck. This is Master in his IS-7 on the Siegfried line. He's just been spotted by that cheeky chaffy over there. Only one artillery. But he is a big bugger. And spotted and has his tracks hit but not taken out by that enemy IS-7. So let's not sit in the open there, spotted and waiting for artillery to hit us. Let's drive around the other side, see what good we can do around here. There's more than enough tanks in the western end of the town. And he does something here that I don't think I've ever seen anybody do before. And it, it seems pretty obvious, but it's still the first time I've seen it. Look at the spot he goes for here. Oh, all kinds of targets. E75 and a T54. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. And um, this is a really good spot. He's got his lower glacis covered up side of the turret of the T-54. Pulled back, not quite far enough. That wreckage in front, that covers up the lower glacis. This is a really good position for an IS-7. You're safe from artillery fire. He's just bounced another hit from that E-75. Lower glacis. <laughs> that E-75 is now almost dead after three hits and he hasn't done a single point of damage to Master. This is the kind of game you want to have every time. Who else can he take a pot shot at? That E-75 isn't interested in coming around for more, surely. Checks the map. Yeah, other side of the town is fine. They might want to keep an eye on the field. Pattern and an AMX 3090 still not accounted for. So we can get one into that AMX, uh, that FV215. Nope, not from here. So 
turns around, enemy IS-7 crossing the road, he's got his back to us. We finished him off. Well, there's his first kill. He's already done nearly 2,000 damage. E-75 finally gets a damaging shot into him, but all he does is damage his tracks. Oh. That was well played, Mr. 215B. Covered up his hole with the wreckage. All he gave us was the front of his turret. Did 400 damage to us. Our return shot bounced off his gun mantlet. And, oh. Oh. Oh, this would be good. The question is, can you get your gun over there? He's just fired. And you can see him struggling to get the gun barrel down and pointing into that guy. That would be... Oh, but no. Alright, that's disappointing. I think we've outstayed our welcome in this spot. Oh! That was useful. Bouncing a shot from an E100. Another low damage roll, but damage is damage. And the reload of the E100 and the IS-7. The E100 does have a longer reload, but not by much. You see him side-scraping around the corner here. Doesn't do him any good. E100 still puts one. Right through the front of the hull. Oh, and he sets him on fire. And he comes around the corner, straightens his arm out, points straight at him. Gets in close to deny him shots at that lower glacis. E100 is a one-shot kill now. He's going to reload first. We are. Second kill. Four and a half thousand damage done. We are down to 40% health though. Oh, that would be bad. 215B. Okay, we'll side scrape. Trick him into shooting our tracks. He falls for it. Kill number three. Kind of lucky that artillery wasn't in the right spot to drop a shell on us there. Another high damage roll. Although the fact that artillery didn't fire is interesting. Oh, he turned just the way we wanted him to. That was fantastic. Is it going to be enough to... It's not enough to save our 215B183, however. But is this got... Oh, you've got to be joking. <laughs> 6,000 damage. Four kills. Yes, the fact that when we were sitting in front of this 183, that artillery didn't shoot at us is interesting. Might indicate where to find that object 261. We've got a T-54E1 chasing an AMX 1390. The 1390 is on the other side of the ramp, but he's actually down in the field. No idea where that AMX 50 Fosh 155 is. No idea where that M103 is. The M103 hasn't been spotted the entire game. Nope. Six cents hasn't gone off. We've not been detected. The T-54E1 can deal with the AMX 1390. Now, he's looking for artillery. Come on, little scumbag, where are you? Oh, that was careless. Don't want to be knocking trees over when you're looking for artillery. Oh, there's the M103. He's not AFK either. I bet, did you see that? That shot came arcing over the top of the M103. The 261's back there. Good shot in the M103. All we're giving him is the turret. Guy's got no chance. He doesn't have the top gun either. He fires, he bounces. We get a second shot in. Our artillery's getting in on the act. Now, I don't know if Master noticed this. There, he didn't notice it. There's the object 261. So he switches. Come on, nail that scumbag. We don't want to get hit again. That was a big hit. The M103 bounces again. 
and we finish him off with a ram. Where's that object? Who's he going to... There's a choice here. Who's he going to go for? Us or the T-54E1? He will have reloaded by now. There he is. Ah, he killed the T-54. <sighs> that was close. Um, now. There's three of us. Versus an enemy AMX-50 Fosh 155. Oh, I see what he's going to do. Okay. He's basically drawing the 50 Fosh 155 back this way. And he's using the wreck of the object as cover from him. He's a one-shot kill for the Fosh. I feel a lot more comfortable about this if the Lerva would get his arse in gear and move. Oh, crap. Come on, Artie. Help us out. He's going for his tracks. Oh. No, that's going to cost him. Well, the Fosh did exactly the right thing. An artillery... Well, the aiming time is, is what let the artillery down. Uh, they did their best. Now it's all in the hands of this Lerva driver. The Lerva needs the spot for artillery. Hopefully he's got the sense to do that. Now the Fosh is probably not dumb enough to sit in the cap circle waiting. But there's very little artillery cover over there. He's going to be heading into the town. There he is. Yep, he was heading into the town. Artie can't hit him there. Now, how many shots does he have? He's either busy reloading, or he's about to reload, or he has, at the most, two shots left. Now, I'll see what the Lover's doing. He's trying, to, he's trying to lure him out to where artillery can shoot him. Oh, but he's just not fast enough. Oh, man. And he's trying to blow this guy's tracks off. To be fair to this Lerva driver, he is doing the right thing. He's never going to kill this guy if this guy's loaded and ready to go. He keeps trying to blow his tracks off. The Fosh doesn't look like he's dumb enough to come around the corner. Because he knows the T-92 is going to be pre-aimed. He's trying to blow his tracks off again. Uh, come on. Oh. <laughs> That was a good game. Um, yeah, I mean, the, you can't really fault the Lerva driver for doing things the way he did. He, he he was determined to try and lure that fella out so the T-92 could kill him, and that is exactly what happened. Very, very nearly went wrong. But um, never mind the Lerva driver. How about that IS-7? Took 14 hits, did nearly 8,000 damage, and earned 67,000 credits out of that game. So that's how you should be doing it. So, summary time. I'm giving the IS-7 a thumbs up. Um, it's not the same machine that it used to be when I started playing World of Tanks. Um, it hasn't really been buffed or nerfed much. I mean, it has been buffed. Uh, it's, it's faster than it used to be. It has been nerfed. It's easier to penetrate the lower glaciers. But it's not so much the fact that changes have been made directly to the tank. It's been indirectly affected. It's, um, its superiority over everything else on the battlefield has been indirectly affected by the introduction of other machines that are as good in their own way. Um, machines like the IS-4, now that it is a tier 10. You know, machines like the T-110E5. Um, I do not fear IS-7s when I'm driving my T-110E5, you know, things like that. The Tier 10 tank destroyers give IS-7s the willies. Um, so it's no longer a, a, as obvious, a, you know, when I get the Tier 10, I want an IS-7. This is what everybody was saying back, you know, two years ago when I started playing this game. That's not the case anymore, but it's not a bad tank. Um, it's not particularly newbie-friendly. But it shouldn't be, because it's a tier 10. You have to... You have to get this tank in close. 
It's hopeless in just about every other circumstance. It's very much a brawler of a tank. It's a knife fighter. It's a dog fighter. Um, it's a difficult tank to drive and do well in, playing random battles in teams full of strangers. It needs support because it's got such a slow reload. And yeah, you can get into the enemy and and blast somebody with that first shot, but then you, you'll take three hits while you're sitting there waiting to reload. You need to work this tank with a good supporting team. And for that reason, I think this is one of the best tanks in the game to play in a platoon with. A platoon of three IS-7s, or even just two IS-7s, are a force of nature. Because you can work together, coordinate your fire, and just destroy everything you come across. It, it, it played like that, this is a fantastic machine. But it's not terrible um, for random battles in you know teams full of people that you don't know either. It's a good machine, uh, but it needs to be driven carefully. Uh, controlled aggression is the order of the day. So the IS-7 does get a thumbs up. Um, it's probably not my favourite tank in the game, but I certainly like it. And, uh, and I hope you guys, if you're grinding down that Russian heavy tank line, I certainly hope you guys have taken something away from this video that will maybe help you when you get it. Or perhaps if you already have it, maybe you learnt something you didn't already know. Uh, you never know. As always, folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.